Sometimes some of these transfer portal combinations between player and school can be a little bit funky. Not this one, because the combination of Cade McNamara's skill set at quarterback and Iowa's philosophy on offense are a match made in heaven. A match that even Ray Kinsella might be envious of. It's a great time to subscribe to the channel. Big 10 football content all off season long. Always mash that like button to spread the word of Big 10 Ted to the masses. When you peek into the future, when you look towards 2023 for the Iowa Hawkeyes and you try to predict the success or maybe not success that this offense might have in 2023 with Cade McNamara at the controls, you got to take a look back at 2021 because I think there's some similarities with what Michigan did in 2021. Maybe not necessarily the talent level because I think that Michigan team in 2021 whole lot more talented than the Iowa team that is likely to take the field in 2023. But there's some similarities in terms of philosophy and maybe how these respective teams were built that could translate in success and transfer the success that Cade McNamara had in 2021 to the Iowa Hawkeyes in 2023. First thing you got to take a look at is all of the body of work that was around Cade McNamara in 2021. Like, look at the talent he had in the backfield with Blake Corum and Hassan Haskins. Look at the first of back-to-back -back Joe Moore Award winning offensive lines. Like, you had all of the other pieces in place to take a lot of pressure off of Cade McNamara. Instead, it was all about the running game and it was all about the trenches. Cade McNamara just had to provide a little bit of balance. You look back at his numbers in 2021, it doesn't pop off the page. You know, it's the, the term game manager slaps you in the face. That's what it does. And that's when I look at film from 2021 and I look at numbers, passing numbers from 2021 for Cade McNamara, it's game manager city. And there's nothing wrong with that. I know the term game manager can sometimes be a derogatory term. People think it's a derogatory term. But when you have what Michigan had on your team around you, sometimes all you need to be is a game manager. Hell, J.J. McCarthy might have been considered a game manager for a lot of the season, but he's a very talented quarterback. Sometimes that's just the way your team is set up, and that's kind of how Michigan football is set up. You got to take a look back on defense, right? Defense helping out the offense. Aiden Hutchins and David Ojabo, Ross at linebacker. Like, they had really good players. That was a really good good team. And this that was a Michigan team that was built from the inside out. And now you kind of take that information. How does this transfer over to 2023 Iowa? First thing you got to take a look at is the run game. I believe Caleb Johnson is going to have a really good season next year. Caleb Johnson really broke out as a freshman in 2022 towards the second half of the season, really establishing himself. They were latched on to the law firm, Williams and Williams, LaShawn and Gavin Williams, for a long time in this offense. But when you saw Caleb Johnson get more and more carries, in this Hawkeye offense, you really saw a spark in this offense, and you really saw flashes of how good this kid can be. Now that he's the main priority at running back, now that he's the main guy through spring ball and through fall camp, he's going to develop into a, a big-time rushing um, threat in the Big Ten Conference. Now, these are very different offensive lines. Let's just get that straight. Young offensive line for Iowa in 2022. That offensive line needs to mature, and I think it will. I think it's going to get better. Obviously, without Caden Proctor, I'm not sure how good or elite it can get um, within the Big Ten Conference this season. They are going to need to get better because I think that's the big concern. That's a big difference right now is the offensive line. If the offensive line can't protect Cade McNamara and it can't pave the way for Caleb Johnson, I was going to have issues in 2023. Now you look at the defensive side of the ball. I mentioned how good it was for Michigan um, in 2021. This is even though I was losing guys like a Jack Campbell and a Seth Benson and other really good players on that front seven, 
The back end of this defense is really good. This is still going to be a Phil Parker defense. This is still going to be an Iowa Hawkeyes defense. The ball Hawkeyes are still going to take that football away because you still look at Quinn Schulte. You look at Xavier and Wampa. Um, you look at um, the turnover machine. You look at Cooper DeGean. You know, this is still going to be a really good defense. Make no mistake about it. Kate McNamara is a big improvement at quarterback. I think that's saying more about how poor the quarterback play was in 2022 and maybe even 2021 for Iowa. It's not as much maybe as a compliment um, to Kate McNamara. But now you kind of take a look at how Kate McNamara fits into this offense. Okay, this is not an offense that's going to push the ball down the field, and that fits to Cade McNamara's strengths. Cade McNamara is a quarterback that is going to excel in a short passing game scheme. And this Iowa offense will excel in a short passing game scheme. Why, you ask? Because it is tight and you. Okay, you look at the guys that have gone through there. You look at your Dallas Clarks. You look at your Noah fans. You look at your George Kittles. You look at your Sam Laportas. You look at all the guys, and they've got two really good tight ends. You've got the best tight end duo in the Big Ten. Uh, maybe one of these guys will emerge as, as the best tight end overall um, in the conference, and maybe, who knows, maybe even down the road, maybe even the country. Okay, you look at Eric All and you look at Luke Lachey. Of course, Kate McNamara has that relationship with Eric All, having played with him at the University of Michigan. You know what this tells me? You know what this has? It's, it's play action. It's roll out. Hit it to the tight end. Eight yards. Move the chains down the field. That's what this, uh, that's what this offense screams to me in 2023. Now they're trying to get receivers. Of course, you get Seth Anderson, who's a transfer that could come in um, and maybe make an impact for the Iowa Hawkeyes in 2023. There's kind of other guys. But the main guys in terms of the pass game are going to be at the tight end position, which tells me this short pass game is going to be leaned upon, which plays into the strengths of Cade McNamara. I never really thought he was great at throwing the deep ball. This is a West Coast kind of quarterback. Short passes, let your guys catch it, move the chains down the field. Iowa's not going to be busting off 20-yard plays. They're not going to be busting off 30-yard plays. That's not how Iowa football plays. Iowa football plays well when you've got a solid game-managing quarterback that can protect the football and a good offensive line that can also pave the way for a good running game. That's how Iowa needs to play in 2023. And because of that, that's why I think Cade McNamara is a good fit for the Iowa Hawkeyes. The only concern, the big concern is that offensive line. Can it be good enough to pave the way for the running game, to protect Cade McNamara, for it all to work together? I want to hear your thoughts. Do you think Cade McNamara is going to be successful for the Iowa Hawkeyes in 2023, or is that offensive line going to have trouble? Is Cade McNamara going to be running around? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to Big Ten Ted if you haven't already. I'm Big Ten Ted. We will see you in the next one.